I tasted fire, I'm ready to come alive I can't just shut it up and fake that I'm alright I'm ready now, I'm not waiting for the afterlife all be awake after that. Uh, we have volunteers do that stuff for us. And I said, why that song? And he's like, well, because kids are pumped up and excited and the adults need to get woken up sometimes. So uh, thank you for watching that video. It shows a little bit about what goes on at camp. Uh, my intention is to kind of do a fast, quick camp update uh, on what's going on and then share a little bit about how this uh, native Chicago, Illinois guy ended up in West Virginia at a church camp. All right. So uh, this next slide just kind of shows our families. Uh, we both are uh, members here at Gateway, uh, Tim Yankee and myself, and uh, very proud to be uh, members here at Gateway. And there should be a picture of Brenda up there. If you call in and talk to our office, uh, we have a part-time secretary, Brenda uh, Lawson. And uh, so that, that's who uh, makes up our main camp core team and our families, and uh, we're just proud to, proud to be a part of Gateway. So the second, second thing I want you to understand, uh, the most important thing today is next slide is the reason that I'm here. Um, it, it's just to say thank you. So if I talk too fast, if I get confusing, if I skip some things, if you just remember this point, we're going to be good for the day. All right, uh, thank you so much as Gateway members uh, for supporting our, our camp. Uh, last year you guys sent 94 kids to us uh, and $4,700. The year before, uh, it was 116 kids and... Uh, uh, almost 5,000, and the year before, again, was another 93 uh, with uh, 5,400. So in three years, you guys have sent 303 kids through our camp doors uh, and over $15,000 or $15, uh, through the camp. And uh, Gateway is our largest uh, supporter as far as 
uh, sending us the most amount of kids uh, to the camp. We're very proud of that. Um, Gateway also offers a partial scholarship, I believe, for, for kids in need uh, or uh, that need to come through the camp. So if that's something you need, make sure you see one of us uh, at the camp or talk to a staff member here and we'll figure that out for you. Um, but your support on this next slide shows everything that the kids have an opportunity to do. Um, there, there's a lot of things that we do at camp. You saw some of the things in the video. But I really want to emphasize uh, these top four. Um, the top four say worship, prayer, God time, and Bible time. Those are never, ever compromised at our camp. We never water them down, and we never have more fun. Uh, well, kids might think it's more fun sometimes, but we never overload the fun and, and, and barely give any bits and pieces of any of those four there. We really, really uh, value the lives that God uh, brings through the camp and that you guys send, and we really take it very seriously about building, growing, and enriching those lives. So those four are never compromised. We have fun while we do them, um, but um, just like everybody learns at a different, different way, a different pace, or they connect to a different liking, we want to try as a camp to uh, never, never change from our core uh, beliefs, but uh, reach as many people as we can. So uh, there's two new events at the camp this year. We've got this bazooka ball. Um, it's, it's, a lo it's a lot of fun. It's, it's kind of like paintball and nerf ball combined. Uh, so you'll have to come to the camp to see it. I don't have a slide uh, of it. And a safe archery thing. Uh, these, these were brought on for the younger kids. Any age can do it, uh, and, uh, but any age can't do paintballing. So we, we brought, this, brought this on to help uh, supplement that. But we have a lot of fun with that, and there's a couple new activities. If you come to camp, you'll see some new things. Um, because of your support, the next slide also shows some of your results. Um, we are very proud as a camp. We try never to measure off of these slides, but it is a huge blessing and honor when you can see 12 different people uh, that, that have committed and been baptized their lives to, the Christ, to Christ and, and, uh, or even the 15 that have either dedicated themselves to a Bible college or uh, made a recommitment to, to Christ. So um, we're very proud of that. And I'm here to say even if it was just for one, one person, it would still be just as rewarding and just as beneficial for us as a camp to work and do what we do. Uh, but this year we were blessed with 12. So there's the names of the ones that have uh, be received Christ this year. Uh, I'm very proud of that. When you send us our kids, to the, your kids to the camp or anybody, we have, we're a year-round camp. So in June, July, and August, we have probably 800-something kids that come through the camp. But we are year-round. We, we uh, provide... Uh, opportunities for reunions and weddings and um, um, high school retreats, college retreats, ladies retreats, men's retreats, and all those kinds of things through the camp year-round. So, um, but while the kids are there this summer, we decided that we want to really be a camp that doesn't just serve as a playground for the kids that come and they just get to have fun while they're there. But because we stand on those top four, we wanted to teach our kids also how important it is in this generation to not become selfish and to serve. So we, uh, we came up with this idea to build this house, the walls of this house, in our basketball court uh, at the camp for Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. And that was great. The high school response was overwhelming. The comments, the, the, just the whole week, we surrounded this building. We prayed over it. We wrote scripture on it. And it was just an amazing experience. Um, so because of that, we also have a missions week on this next slide um, we, we decided to keep going with this and involve other churches and, and partner up with other even uh, missions. So um, we were able to go out to um, thir uh, nine different missions or local families in our community, partner along with them and do some things like Gateway already does here. Uh, we did this as a camp through the camp as well. Um, but, you know, different places um, we were able to help. And that was a very proud moment for us as a camp, teaching our youth how to serve. Uh, as a camp when they're at camp. Uh, it went so well that this, this year in 2014, uh, that one week of camp, the missions week of camp, it's already sold out. It, it went so well last year that they already signed up and we haven't even started camp and it's sold out. Um, so we, are, we see the need. We are trying to uh, adjust and accommodate to, to feed our youth and provide them with opportunities to serve. Um, so uh, Gateway does a real good job with that too. Um, and so there's, there's lots of ways to, to partner together to do that. Uh, our camp weeks aren't sold out, but just this one particular go and serve week is, is sold out already. So uh, that's how much they love it. Um, our next few years, uh, we just kind of 
I'm going to just briefly go over the slide, but we would like to reach 1,000 kids in, a, in one summer. Um, like I said, we're at about 800 and something in June, July, and August. We'd like to hit 1,000. Uh, we want to always maintain our Bible camps. That's our core. That's what uh, we were founded on, so we're not going to compromise our Bible camps uh, to do that. Um, but we uh, also have developed a special needs program through our camp, and we offer events now that are free, uh, day camps to special needs. Uh, if they can't be mainstreamed in, we, we've got separate uh, days and volunteers and helpers for that. Uh, and that's been a huge success. That's, that's been growing and growing. We started out with just a few, and they're even coming to work days now. We had a work day. We had, we had 15 people from the special needs community serving at our camp and working and uh, helping the camp out. But we've, we've been blessed. We had a special needs uh, Easter egg hunt, and we had... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the number, but there was a lot of people. <laughs> we had just 50 helpers for that day. It was very awesome and overwhelming in a, in a, in a great sort of way. Um, so the need is out there. We're trying to meet these needs as a camp. Very proud uh, to have the support of Gateway and all that we do. All right, so uh, people like to ask you, well, what do you do when the kids aren't there in June, July, and August? I mean, do you sit around? Do you go on vacation? You know, do you watch TV? no. Um, we are most busiest probably when kids aren't there. It's just a little different pace. Um, it's, um, this winter, with our heat on, with the water dripping, and with the buildings being checked every morning, every evening, uh, we still froze a pipe in our girls' dorm, um, and it flooded the dorm. So uh, that was an unexpected expense and unexpected uh, project that we weren't ready to do. So we've been in, in, in kind of quick repair mode here on that, and overtime and overdrive and lots of work going towards this. But that's a picture of the water that was uh, standing in the basement and some of the insulation and the walls that uh, were taken down and fell down. Uh, the next slide just shows some of the repairs going on. Uh, we were tiling in there on Saturday, yesterday. Uh, we stayed all day. We had another mini work day yesterday. Um, so if you have uh, any opportunity to help, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, even just cutting grass, that's something I have to do as well. And we have uh, like a total of 18 buildings. This is just one that I'm working in. So um, I love my job. I love what I do. But I love it being a ministry and serving alongside with other people. So I encourage you to seek me out and I'll put you to good use. All right. As we continue to improve. Oh, one more. I forgot. Yep. This is our work day here that we had April 5th. Um, and we, we have our pool uh, being power washed and painted and fixed and ready. Uh, we had the work going on behind the girls' dorm from the water damage and, and the, the hill uh, that we removed back there and, and did a little bit of new landscaping, new roofing. Uh, we had 20 different projects plus going on this one day. Over 80 people came to the work day to help. Um, probably about 13 to 15 different churches all came together. It was a great day of fellowship and a lot of work happened for the camp and this kind of caught me up from being behind on that incident with the girls' dorm. So I am very, very appreciative. Again, if you don't remember anything that I'm saying, please remember, thank you. Um, and this, this is great help to camp. And this is your camp. This is just something I help take care of. But this is Gateway's camp, uh, as well as uh, several other churches. So thank you so much for investing into us and, and helping work alongside with us. As we continue to invest in our camp, we've upgraded things and made things more efficient. One of the things we've done is upgraded our website. Uh, we want to continue to find ways to minister and create opportunities to do that. So with this new website, uh, we've got an area to put some prayer requests on there. Uh, you can get some real-time, up-to-date photos of the work days and kids at camp. And uh, we're working on so that if we have a guest speaker down at campfire, they can get downloaded on there and you can watch what your kids were uh, being taught down by the campfire and some of the neat things that, uh, that the campfire brings. There's a neat atmosphere when, when you get Christians that are energized for Christ, sitting around a campfire and, and glorifying God. And it's really awesome blessing. Uh, so we're, we're working on getting all that stuff on there um, with our new website. We do have a new mobile app now that you can even register for camp right on your mobile phone. So um, those are new, new and exciting things. Uh, just kind of a side note, we're always um, trying not to keep up with the trend. We're not so worried about modernizing, keeping up with the trend, but we want to be efficient. And so we're constantly uh, looking for ways to improve our energy costs through, uh, we've got a geothermal system that was uh, installed many years ago for our gym heating system. Um, you know, we use our heat pumps. We got the LED lights going in as old ones break and go out. We're putting in new LED lights. So we're looking long term for the, the health of the camp down the road. Uh, I'm an electrician by trade, so we're constantly uh, fixing things up, making things security better, all kinds of stuff. 
and, and I can't go over all that or I'll run out of time. But just know that we're working hard and we really uh, value your, your money and how we spend it. And we're very careful about trying to do what we have to do to make the camp run and be nice, but keep our focus on reaching and, and growing those that come through the camp. Uh, the next slide is just uh, some more ways to continue to stay connected to Howell's Mill. Uh, first of all, we've got to have those kids. You guys uh, are doing great. Um, again, you send us the most kids from any of our supporting churches, um, but don't slack. We want to keep growing. Um, every, we had 46 more people this year than last year, so uh, we want to keep that trend going and uh, keep encouraging people to come. Um, Gateway already uh, supports us financially through the missions program, and uh, we're proud to be one of the missions they support here. Um, but uh, you can also uh, help with projects. Um, sometimes small groups will say, we want to go serve. How can we do that? And we set you up with a project. Um, we get a lot of volunteers uh, through our big programs. You know, the, the, your, your staff here come out and paint our house or dean a week of uh, camp or uh, are on our board. So we're very excited to, to have uh, the Gateway resources uh, and support there with that as well. And lastly, our VIP program. Uh, this is a program that's kind of dwindling, but it is very vital to camp. Uh, June, July, and August, we have a nice little cash flow because we have 800 people coming through the camp. But uh, come after the holidays in, in January, February, March, that cash flow is very, very low, and we're still working hard to make sure the, ba the bills get paid um, and improve, to repair anything that the kids damaged from the year uh, of, of camp, and then fix anything we want to improve for the following year. So um, our VIP portent is... The VIP program is very important, and uh, there's no monthly financial commitment. You just say, I'm going to do five bucks a month, and then you just send five bucks a month. So uh, we have information about that. If you're interested, um, you can see me or contact the camp. In the last slide, I just want to highlight some of our events. Um, they're, they're on our website as well, but uh, while I was here, I just thought I would mention some. Uh, we'll pack the pantry. Gateway is doing cereal. I didn't know that in the first one because I was too flustered about what I was doing here. <laughs> but, uh, so but Gateway is doing cereal. So if you're helping pack the pantry, we're going to um, donate cereal to the camp. And on a kickoff, camp kickoff day, that's when we're going to deliver it there and have it all in one lump. Um, but uh, camp kickoff is May 4th. This is a great event. This is free. Um, the kids love this. If you've never been to camp or you haven't been there in a long time, this is a great way to, to walk around, get to know the camp, bring somebody that's never been to see the camp. Uh, there's a lot of inflatables and all kinds of activities for kids to do. It's a fun day. Uh, you already mentioned the early bird discount, uh, the, the second one uh, and the last one. And then, uh, again, online are the dates of everything. So uh, that is very fast, quick camp update uh, with some slides. But I, I kind of want to focus on being Sunday in worship. I want to focus on a little bit on getting back to how did I end up here at camp. Um, uh, normally, I, I'm not a preacher uh, or a speaker. I'm just a maintenance man, and, and I just have been going to church like most of you and, and just trying to honor God. Uh, but it's a neat little testimony I, I kind of want to uh, share with you this morning. Uh, I was raised in a church, uh, and, and I knew what church was. I went to church all the time as a kid. But uh, at a young age, your faith is immature. And, and if you don't invest into your faith, even as you get older, it's still immature. Your understanding of a Christian walk and God uh, is not as deep as it needs to be. It should always be growing. Um, so I've always kind of worked in the secular settings. I'm an electrician by trade, but I've always had a worldly job and, and always volunteered and concentrated on church uh, in between. Um, as a kid, though, my faith, my faith believes that church was something like this. Uh, my parents did a good job. You know, we, we said our prayers before we went to bed, and they made sure we didn't skip church. We weren't allowed to miss church and all that. But uh, church was something I thought we did. You know, you, you go to church on Sunday, and then you come home, and you do whatever you want. And then you go to church on Wednesday night, and you got to get to bed and go to school, and it's the rest of the week. So the world, worldly things have a tendency to rob God of his glory and why we're actually here on Sunday morning and what we're doing with our lives. And I was one like that. Uh, many times God didn't get the glory due uh, with my Christian walk and faith. Um, so we, uh, we were just working in a uh, kids group because we have kids, and we thought, well, if we're going to send our kids to someone, we need to put our time in as well. And that's how we started. And God's like, oh, I got plans for you. And so uh, we started working with the kids, and then we eventually got asked to do a small group. We went to a church much like Gateway in Illinois and Wisconsin borderline there, 
uh, called First Christian Church, and they knew the importance of providing resources and enriching the lives of people that come there. So they said, hey, we'd like you to get into a small group. And I'm like, okay, we'll do that. And so after the first small group, we fell in love with it, and then we ended up leading small groups in our house. Uh, again, deepening and enriching our walk with Christ and our faith. Um, not something I wanted to sign up for right away, but because I was willing to try, it made a difference in my life. So we got on this series by John Ortenberg, uh, John Ortberg, sorry, and it's called, If You Want to Walk on Water, Then You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. And this is based off of Matthew 14, verse 22, and most of you are familiar in here where, where Jesus is out on the water in a storm, walking to the boat, and Peter is, is there, and he sees Jesus, and he says, hey, I'm, I want to go with you. And he gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water, and he starts to sink. And, and so this story growing up, I'm like, okay, this is exactly the Christian walk. Christians by themselves can't walk. We sink. We drown. Okay? We need Jesus to save us. I got it, right? Well, I thought I had it. Uh, I've never looked at the story before this way, but by, this, by, by investing in my faith, it, uh, John Orberg said, hey, what about those other guys in the boat back here? He said, those guys... They saw Jesus out there too. It wasn't just Peter that saw him. They were too afraid to go where Jesus was. Jesus was in a scary place. But these guys back here, they're like, oh, this boat is safe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here where I know it's going to keep afloat and, and hopefully weather this storm. And they were too afraid to follow Jesus. And then I started thinking, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is me. And everything I've ever done in my life, I, I feel like I've tried my best and I've done my best and I've been proud of the things that I've done, but there's one thing I haven't been able to shed, and that's this thing of discontentment. In my whole life, I was always saying, okay, God, I'm going to go over here and do this. I'm bringing you with me. All right, now I've got to go over here and do this. I'm bringing you with me. And even as my job as an electrician, I was like, okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to work as an electrician. I'm going to make lots of money, and, and I'll, I'll honor you where I'm at, you know, and... To the point where a guy even said, I've never heard you swear before, and he offered me a $50 bill. And he said, if, if, if you drop, drop the bomb, I will uh, let you have this $50. And I was a young married kid, a young man with little kids, and I needed money, but I didn't take it. Um, he knew I needed money. He told me with that, and he said, here you go. It's yours if you just say it. I'm like, no, no, no. So I felt like God was working through my life wherever I was. But there was one problem. I had it backwards. I was bringing God where I wanted to go. And how many times in our lives, even today, and all of you guys sitting out there, maybe some of you guys are just here at church because you feel like you've got to be here, and you're, just, you're bringing God with you. And you're not being led to church by God. Or in your workplaces, or anywhere, fill in the blank. How many times do we give God 98% of us, but we're going to keep two to ourselves? We're going to keep a little private sin, or we're going to keep a little selfishness, or we're going to keep just some little part that we don't want God to freely have, we don't want anyone else to have control over. It's me. And I've done that. And I sometimes still do that, where it's all about me. And so with this study, I quickly realized that, that I was doing the leading instead of God. And that all, there's a lot that I've edited out for time's sake, but things started happening in my life uh, to add to this discontentment to where I saw God was wanting me to do something. He said, I want you to go to West Virginia. I'm like, what? I don't want to move. I had everything I needed right there. I was happy, happy with my church. I was happy with my community. I was a volunteer firefighter at EMT. I was on the board of education. I was just involved and happy. And I'm like, God, why can't you use me here? You know, uh, and, and, and God says, no, no, no. I, you're not experiencing everything I want you to experience. Do you want to walk on water like Peter, or do you want to stay in your comfort zone? And that's another thing. Growing up, I'm like, oh, there's only one person that can walk on water. Jesus, right? No. The Bible says Peter got out of his boat and walked on water too, and he's just a man. But he got to experience something with Jesus, and I never thought of it that way. So between these two things, I that really impacted my life, and I'm like, all right, well, I want to experience this, and I think God has asked me to do something. But there's this crazy storm out here, and I don't want to go to West Virginia. But he's calling me to this church camp, and it's very clear he wants me to go here. It's the hardest decision I've ever made, um, and scary too. And there was a storm. There was a storm. But I decided I was going to, if, if I'm going to be any kind of man, if I'm going to be any kind of Christian, if I'm going to be any kind of husband and father, I don't want my kids to think it's church was something we did. I want them to see that that. Christ has lived out daily. 
in our life. And I didn't want my kids to see me making the same mistakes that I was as a kid or having them repeat the same mistakes. We all have kids because we want them. We want them to succeed and do better than we did. And I want to make sure my kids don't learn what I did at 34. I want them to know it right off the bat. So I decided we were going to go through this storm. And we left all of our family and friends and everything behind, our comfort zone, our house, everything that we've done, in the hopes of going to this camp. And there was a storm, and I started to sink, and I'm like, God, why are you doing this? Why am I sinking? I'm drowning here, and, and I've given it all away to follow you. And, and God says, oh, no, I got you, Tim. I got you. And he just reached down, just like Peter, and he pulls me out, and he says, you're going to live on this camp. You're not going to have to worry about your bills in Illinois. Um, and a quick story around that, I mean, our house had actually entered foreclosure. We tried for almost two years to sell it. And I, I was saying, God, why, why, why? I'm giving it all away here. Why, why this? Um, and, and so there was a struggle. My kids had no family or friends. No, they had some adjustments with school. Uh, we were the cornerstone to our family back in Illinois, and things started crumbling a little bit when we left. So I, I started down, God. I'm like, why, God? And he just reached out and pulled me up, and he said, I got you. It's going to be fine. And guess what? I'm here, obviously. Uh, the discontentment has been lifted. Uh, there's still going to be storms. I mean, we're going to have to weather the storms. But the, the honor and glory has now been taken off of everything else in this world and given back to God. And that's what we were created to do. And so I got stuck in this trap, and I wasn't reflecting the glory and honor back to God wholeheartedly with everything. I was keeping a little bit back. And as soon as I did, I got to experience walking on water. And he did rescue me from this storm. So my question to you this morning is, as, as, we, as I wrap up a, a very abbreviated t- a testimony, when Jesus picked his disciples, he said, well, you don't have to be perfect, and you don't, I know that you are a sinner, I know that you've done this, I know you struggle with that. He said, but if you love me and you're going to follow me, I'll work with you. So as Christians, my question to you this morning is, are you allowing Jesus to train you on the job, wherever you are? You don't have to move cross-country uh, to to bring glory and honor to God. That was just my particular story. Everyone in this room has a story to share. And so are you sharing that story with someone else? Are you reflecting your life back to Christ? Uh, Are you bringing others to focus in on Christ? Are you allowing God to work in your life in a way that's transforming you into uh, the -the on-the-job training that he says, hey, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you that. You're going to make mistakes, but I'm going to give you on-the-job training. Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us of this, and I needed to hear this during the storm, and this is what I found. It says, God says, hey, I've got plans for you, and they are for good, and not for disaster, and, and you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, you're going to have hope. And so those, the Bible is full of reminders. Are you being refreshed? Are you renewing your mind? Are you enriching your life? Um, are you leading your family? Are you leading your kids? These are all a lot of good questions, and, and, and I, I said a lot of them because we all have different walks of life this morning out there. But the big question is, are you, are you sitting back in your comfort zone? Are you holding something back? Are you watching others do the work? Are, are you growing? Are you learning? Are you, are you afraid to go through a storm? Are you going through a storm? My biggest uh, challenge to you is allow God to work through you. Don't, don't get caught in your zone of comfort. Don't be afraid. And, and I want you to experience what Peter experienced, what I feel like I get to experience walking with Christ. My discontentment is gone, and, and I want all of you to have that opportunity. So if you have any need this morning, I can't encourage you enough to just let it all go and, and come forward. Let us pray for you. Let us, uh, if you need to be forgiven of your sins, let us baptize you. Let us uh, point you in the right direction. I love Dave's starting point over here. This is a great thing. Uh, You're not going to be perfect today. You're not going to have everything right today. Uh, But it's a starting point, and you can get started today. Uh, I don't want anyone to make the same mistakes I did in procrastinating and learning slowly. I I felt like since I was raised in the church, I'm kind of embarrassed to share some of this testimony because uh, I feel like I was a slow learner, but it's because I wasn't putting what I needed to put into it. And there's some of God's timing in there, too, that had to work through. Uh, but now I get to use all my skills, knowledge, and training that, that he's brought me through to, to help this camp out. I thought I was just doing what I wanted to do, and all along God had plans for me. 
So that, the same thing is for you. You may think that you're running a business. You may think that you're supporting this or doing that. But guess what? God's got plans for you. And how are you honoring God with those plans? So I just want to encourage you this morning to think about that. Uh, look at stories a different way in the Bible. I've heard it a hundred times, but I never heard it that way. And it really changed my life when I did. Um, so I'm going to close with a prayer. And, and then if you have any need when they uh, start to play, why don't you please come forward and Dave will meet you up here at the starting point. Will you pray with me? Lord, I personally thank you for the life that you've called me to live. I, I thank you so much for teaching me all these things in my life that allow me to share this testimony this morning. Lord, I pray that you will encourage those here today to share their stories and their testimonies with others, not boastfully or even out of pity, Lord, but, but that you may be seen and that your works may be seen through them. As I close your prayer reciting your holy and perfect words, may we receive your peace and help our hearts not to be troubled or afraid, as in John 14. Help us to be steadfast, abounding in your work, to always be doers of the word and not just hearers, as in James 1. Help us to come boldly before the throne to obtain your mercy and grace in our time of need, in Hebrews 4. Help us to remember that all things do work together for the good to those who love God, as in Romans 8. Help us not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, as in Romans 12. And give us these opportunities to do good and to bear one another's burdens, as in Galatians 6. And to do those things, Lord, without complaining or disputing, that we may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in this midst of a crooked and perverse generation. May we hold fast to the word of life and rejoice in the day of Christ, in Philippians 2. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you so much for allowing me to update you on the camp and share my testimony. I'm not a preacher. I've never been to Bible college. I'm just a man who loves God. If I've got a story, you do too. I don't want no glory and honor. May, may God receive all the glory and honor through all of us. And I hope he did today with me encouraging you to be bold. Thank you so much.